I just like to make a comment. I serve on the Economic Development Trust, and I feel whether it was intentional or not, there some of the comments this morning were critical of what that trust has done. I would like to point out a, a lot of the activities of the trust are not directed downtown. Some of our, our more successful projects are not associated with downtown at all. The Outlet Mall is far southwest Oklahoma City, not far southwest, far west Oklahoma City. Uh, Amor is far northwest Oklahoma City. And we've done a lot of significant projects, a lot of good work. Boeing is not downtown project. And, and so the, the implication that the Oklahoma City Development Trust is focused exclusively on downtown is a misconception. We have had a number of very successful projects that were not related with downtown at all. I, I don't mean to be defensive, but it, I felt that there were some arrows being slung against our organization that were not well deserved. And I would point out also that the most successful retail facility in Oklahoma City is not downtown Oklahoma City. Well Springs is a long ways from downtown. And I think uh, the, the implication that everything's been done recently has, been, has benefited only downtown is a false impression. Yeah, and I'll add that in my lifetime, no part of the city has been more stripped of retail than downtown Oklahoma City. Uh, Meg and then Gary. Yeah. Fine. I, I'm, just, I'm just saying the idea that, that certain parts of the city have been neglected and we've lost retail it, it also includes downtown. It's another part of the city that has lost retail. I mean, there's lots of places that have lost retail. There's money been spent to try to bring it back more than downtown, though. Agreed. Meg? I, I just a sort of a big picture comment to synthesize some of these things. You know, Oklahoma City has had great successes, as everybody shared, but we certainly have had them. Um, we've been smart, but we've also been lucky, and, and we've had um, the ability to pull these ad hoc groups together. And, you know, we look around the country, and economic development is a really competitive game these days. And so as you're looking at, you know, regions around the country, I know a lot of homework was done on other um, successful programs like this. We're competing on a daily basis with our sister cities in the region to try to, um, you know, whether it's a convention hotel or amassing land in a land bank to put a project. We're competing fiercely every day, and a focused approach, I think, is the direction that we were trying to go, rather than just a, put together a group when a project lands in our lap. Um, and so I think there is some merit here in, in taking a look at a different approach. Okay. Gary? Well, I don't want this to sound like I'm downplaying anything that's been said, because I, I understand everybody's concerns has voiced them so far, and I think there's some very valid concerns out there. and, and I, and I applaud waiting two weeks till we get some of those answers. But sometimes the old fireman in me wants to get back and focus where the fire is, actually. And I, we're not being asked to form this alliance. The alliance has already been formed. And what we're asked to vote on is a contract with the alliance to provide the services that were detailed in the presentation. And the fact that, that it's, a, it's a board, it's an alliance, it's a not-for-profit, that we don't have control over the board but yet they may receive directly or indirectly tax dollars is not a new concept in Oklahoma City. There are other things out there that do that. Uh, the Chamber, all of the Chambers, Downtown Oklahoma City, Inc., State Fair Board. I mean, there's a number of things out there that we utilize, the, the, the Boathouse Foundation, the Zoological Society. I could go on and on with, with entities that we don't control the board on that we rely on to help us guide the city in any number of ways, and some of those receive money directly or indirectly. So um, I, I don't want the public out there that's watching thinking that this is a brand new concept here uh, when we've used this concept before in, in other things. Uh, but then I'll go back to my original statement. I think there's some very good concerns that have been brought up, and hopefully uh, in the next couple of weeks we can get these answered. But, uh, you know, again, we, we're this is a an agreement with the alliance that we're voting on. We're not forming the alliance here. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah, Ed? I think there are um, some intangibles, given the timing, that are independent of the efficacy of, of this group or this idea. And we are coming off the most expensive, traumatic, non-transparent, set of elections in our city's history. And 
I think that there, there is a need for healing. There, there is anxiety and stress among significant uh, numbers of the populace when they see our, our fire and police uh, in conflict with, with what they perceive as city and a, a non-transparent entity that to this day remains unidentified. So when Steve Lackmeyer broke this story in the Oklahoman on Friday, there's an explosion of Facebook activity and blog activity on like OKC Talk and, and except for the few comments asking for more information, they are universally not just negative but extraordinarily negative, very fearful. Um, it's, it's the sense of urgency that, that we move forward with this. Um, that is creating questions, and, and it centers on the lack of transparency. That, that we are um, the conspiracy theorists and, and those are, are concerned about this perceived plutocratic fusion of the city apparatus with a, a very small number of extraordinarily wealthy and politically charged individuals. And. Uh, I think that what, what's concerning to a lot of people is that you are transferring a city apparatus, which is under the open records, and you're, and you're doing all this um, to the exclusion of the Open Records Act. I think that's what's, what's pouring gas on the fire of this fear of the lack of transparency in this context. I mean, it might be different six months ago or even six months from now. But to do it today, one week after after these uh, traumatic elections, I think you have to you have to take it in that context, and so um, uh, I, I would leave that at that. I, I would I do have some questions. There in the in the uh, newspaper article, uh, there's a focus on the convention center hotel, and that's another uh, issue that creates anxiety. Uh, in terms of lack of transparency, when the, the Urban Land Institute had an advisory panel last year and indicated that the convention center is not viable without a uh, hotel next to it and that the taxpayers are going to need to fund that to the tune of $50 million. Um, in, the, in the newspaper article, it, it indicates that a, a focus of this entity will be the convention center hotel. And I haven't, haven't seen that mentioned in the presentation this morning. So uh, that, that would be the first question is, what, what focus would this entity have on the, on the uh, procurement of funding or the establishment of a convention center hotel? Um, I think that if the city council um, decides that the development of a convention center hotel is um, necessary for the economic success of the convention center, the alliance could be directed to help um, put that project together. and that and that we do need to begin to look at and do some feasibility studies on the Convention Center Hotel project to, to get more information and answer some of the questions about the impact that it has on the financial success of the Convention Center. Um, I think that the development of the Convention Center Hotel will be one of the most difficult projects this community will undertake. And it is going to take um, a level of focus and resources to pull the ideas together. It's a very complicated financing structure typically. It can be a very complicated ownership structure. In some other communities, the hotels are actually publicly owned. You know, so we need to begin to do the research and the study that's necessary to help us make decisions about that in the future, to help you all make that decision in the future. And it will, you know, it, it could potentially require a great deal of public subsidy. So, I mean, yes, that is one of the projects that we felt that the alliance could work on and provide the resources and the expertise um, so that you wouldn't have to necessarily go hire some other consulting firm to help you do that. But, um, and we have a little bit of experience putting together hotel projects, but this one has the potential of being even more complicated. If, if there's a study that, that is undertaken that shows an adverse outcome, that study could, could be effectively buried. It would never be accessible to the public. Is that? I, mean, I think what I would foresee happening is just, I'm, and I'm kind of 
just make, talking about this right now to respond to your question, is that if the city council wanted to do that kind of study and wanted, to, wanted the alliance to help head that up, they would require us to come back and report on the findings. I mean, I think that's, that's what we do with consultants typically. So um, I, I, don't, I don't think the findings would be buried. That's a decision for the city council to make. No, it could be. I mean, could the alliance, well, let, let, help me understand the, the, the budget, you're asking for roughly 300000 from the city council. There's a contingency that the manager can use for an additional 100000 And that's a part of the 300000 yeah. And then what monies would come from other trusts? That has not been identified yet. We are still talking with all those other entities and developing agreements with them. But it's anticipated that there would be funds and, yeah. and the scope of service from Urban Renewal, the OIA, and the Industrial and Cultural Trust. Is it, is it, a, is it a fair statement that the, the sum of those totals would be in the neighborhood of six to 700000 a year? No. Okay. You mean including the money from the city? Yes. Yes, it could get to be about that, with the money from the city. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions for Kathy? Uh, Councilman White asked for a hard copy of the presentation this morning, and so we'll provide that all to you today, a hard copy of the presentation. If you want it electronically, we can provide that to you also. Okay. Uh, I just have one other question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Kathy. He's going to go get them. Uh, you made the statement that the, uh, that the convention center was going to be probably one of the biggest uh, challenges of, of all the developments that the city has been involved in. Is, is the convention center hotel. Okay. What do you find is so unique about the convention center hotel? Is it the location or is it just the it, It's the financing of and the structure of the hotel and the... Um, and, and the level of public subsidy that's been needed in other communities to finance a convention center hotel and you know whether or not that level of subsidy is going to be necessary here and all of those different kinds of questions. They're very expensive to build. Well, I don't think we've built anything that was cheap. And in and, 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 and reference to that, I mean, the Ford Center, uh, I mean, everything yeah. that we developed, it's, it, from the beginning, it was, it was either brand new to mm -hmm. us, which was a major challenge. I just don't understand all this here conversation about this issue about the hotel, convention hotel. And most of us on this council has traveled throughout the United States, stayed in convention hotels. Is there one hotel that we could compare to the size to the population of Oklahoma City that has been developed as a convention hotel that's being successful within our region that you all know of? I could probably get you some information about that. But, but it, I think the main thing is the difference in the, you know, with the arena and building a new convention center, those will clearly be publicly owned and yeah. operated. A convention hotel may not be publicly owned. You may not want it to be publicly owned. You certainly will probably want it to be privately operated. So it's, it's more of the structure of, of the transaction and the financing associated with it that's complicated and not as clear as funding an arena that we had a dedicated sales tax to pay for. Um, we, we don't have that with the convention center hotel. We're going to have to, if, if a subsidy is required, we're going to have to identify what the sources of that subsidy will be and put together some kind of financing structure. So that's, that's the difference in the convention center hotel. And we can get you examples of other cities and their convention center hotels. There are very few that are being built in the United States right now that are not that don't have some kind of public involvement. I understand that. But I keep looking back to the Skirvin Hotel. I mean, at one point in time, people said that was an impossibility. There was no way that it could be done. But some kind of way, y'all sit down, some committee, and it worked out. 
Uh, yes, it did, and it and it took a couple years to figure it out. Um, <laughs> and, and and I'm not saying that, that we won't figure out the convention center hotel. I'm not saying that at all. I'm I'm saying that it takes a great deal of effort and focus to do those kinds of projects and do them well. And it almost didn't work multiple times. Yeah. There there were many. We were at the eleventh forks hour. in the road where where it could not have worked out as well as it did. And I anticipate we're going to have a convention center hotel too, but now without some challenges and now without some decisions that will be made by the council as we go forward. I like Mr. Couch's point, <clears throat> not without the decision of the council as we go forward. Keep in mind that council still has the authority to direct this agency to do what they're going to do. They're not going to start out on their own and do all these things. If we want them to do a study on a convention center hotel, we will direct them to do that. And then their study will become our property, subject to the Open Meeting Act, subject to full disclosure. It's not like anything's going to be done under the table or they're going to do things on their own hook. They are going to respond, because of the nature of the way they're put together, to our policy directions. And I think that's a key point to remember. That this uh, new entity will have no policy-making authority. And, and please point that we're going to bring back one option. Well, if, if it's not the option that this council likes, we'll send them back and ask them to do another option. We have that responsibility, just like we do in the MAPS 3 projects. And we have that same responsibility to some extent, authority, when we deal with projects that are brought to us by city staff. We, we, we are the, the policy-making body here. We need to keep that in mind, that we will make policy and we will insist that the policies be carried out by the people that we want. And one last comment. This, the convention hotel thing is a little bit off the subject, but I have to make this comment. Because of the cost and the public cost of the convention center hotel, it seems to me totally irresponsible for people from, from the convention tourism and for newspaper editors to, edit, to, to editorialize in favor of saying that we should move the convention center to the front when we've got another $60 million to come up with out of general fund revenues, most likely, to, f to subsidize the, a, a convention center hotel to make a convention center work. I mean, we all ought to get on the same page. We never said, we've never said we want to move the convention center to the front, and one of the reasons we didn't is because we all knew the convention center, or most of us knew, that the convention center hotel was going to be a big problem and it had to be dealt with, or, or the convention center wasn't going to work. And so it's irresponsible for just to be beating the drum saying we're losing 47 cents a minute uh, if, we don't, uh, if we don't put the convention center to the front of the line, when we can't put it to the front of the line. It would be a utter fiscal irres uh, the, the epitome of fiscal irresponsibility to move it to the front of the line without a decision about how we're going to finance the hotel. I mean, so I read that in... In, in a particular newspaper on a regular basis that totally disregards the fact of where's the rest of that money going to come from. And I, and I think that's... I mean, we also we'll work really hard to make sure that isn't the general, general fund. fund. Yeah, this, is, this is a little fail if we get $60 million out of the general fund. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we, we have essentially started the, the hotel, pro I mean, the convention center process. We have, we started it. We've, the, 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 the advisory committee has appointed a, a, a consultant to do some site selection work, and the project's been started. And I, 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 I for a different reason, I think I take exception to the articles that have been in paper as well, that the thing's being put off. This is a, a long, complex project. It's going to take work it's starting right now to get it done in, in any kind of reasonable time frame. And if we follow the MAPS philosophy like we have in the past, that we do these projects after they're paid for, whether you put this thing today or two years from now, it's a long time off. And we're going to have to suffer the loss of $47 million a minute or whatever it was. And yeah, we're going to have the opportunity to discuss that issue in detail next week. Good, good transition, Jim. <laughs> Ready to move on to the concurrence docket? Uh, Dr. Warner. Yeah. Dr. Warner, this, idea, this item has been Thank deferred you, for two weeks. Did you want to speak to this item today while you're here? Jack, we will need your name and address for the record. Thanks for coming down. Jack Warner, uh, 2721 Northwest 42nd. Uh, in, I mean, 
in your district. Thank you. I was pleased with the conversation, and I don't think what I'll add is, is a great deal different than what I've heard on this, but I want to say three things very clearly and, and quickly, if I may. Number one, as Suzanne Broadbent and I sat reading the paper this past week and became aware of this issue, the first thing I'd like you to know was, was our comments were about what a great job our city leadership has done over the past 15, 20 years and how pleased we are with the direction and a sense and a belief and a feeling that we can trust the leadership of this city. And that's a comment that I realize that has been made many times in many public gatherings. Uh, so I say that with sincerity and I want you guys to know that. Guys mean a general sense. I hope that you will do everything to maintain both that direction and that sense of trust. And the first thing that concerned me about this in the paper, Pete, you alluded to, Larry, you, you brought up is, please, however you decide to run it is, is fine, whether it's this entity or, or otherwise. But if you go with this entity, please don't let this statement of, well, we're not quite sure how open records will apply. Give us full, absolute, total transparency. And that ties into the second thing. While I appreciate and value and think these people care and have done a great job, I'm sorry, I don't want just the Oklahoma City Chamber and Heritage Hills and Nichols Hills and Gallardia making the decisions of what to be brought to the table and patting us on the head and saying, we'll take care of you. If you believe that South Oklahoma City and Northeast Oklahoma City haven't been stepchildren, then you believe differently than I do. I raised my children in South Oklahoma City. Now I'm a wealthy Northsider, but I believe South Oklahoma City and Northeast Oklahoma City need more representation on this decision-making board. So those are my statements. I appreciate all the hard work you do. I know it's not easy. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Mr. Warner, thank you for calling me on Friday. I enjoyed the conversation. I appreciate it.